Hello and welcome to First Look FSU Men's Basketball. Tom Block, Keith Jones. Here we are as the, the season is literally right around the corner, Keith. And it's hard for me to believe this is Leonard Hamilton's 12th year at Florida State. And he'll get the 15-team ACC. It's, it's the dawning of a new era in a lot of ways, certainly at the conference standpoint. In many respects, it's almost like joining a new conference because you've got so many new members coming in. Now, Florida State familiar with them uh, in terms of having played these schools in the past, but it's great to have them in the league and certainly by all accounts, the ACC, the best basketball team uh, conference in the world. Notre Dame and Syracuse will come to Tallahassee. FSU will travel to Pittsburgh this year in terms of the new entrance. Let's talk about some of the new faces or, or more than that, the returning faces, one key face is gone for Florida State and Michael Snare, but there's four other starters that return on a team that has four seniors this year for FSU. A couple of things about this team that, that are on the positive. Number one, you have O'Carl White coming back, who averaged in double figures, uh, great rebounder, great three-point shooter, though he can go inside as well. The other stat that jumped out at me is Devin Booker, who, who kind of solidified his position at the point guard started the last 11 games of last year, averaged nine and a half points, about four and a half assists. Once they got that settled in, he performed very well. And then of course you've got the towers in there, the, the threefold towers, if you can find ways to get the ball inside and also a return to the uh, FSU junkyard defense. That's been a focus during preseason camp. Well, and that's where Leonard Hamilton has hung his hat during his coaching career. Now in the prior iteration of the ACC, Florida State had worked its way into the top four, on a top three even, on a consistent basis. Last year, Florida State had a four-year run of reaching the NCAA tournament come to an end. This year, maybe they can start it again, although the competition has certainly ratcheted up. Think about Leonard Hamilton's comments, you know, about being a program of significance. Florida State's 18 and 16 last year, nine and nine in the conference, and we're disappointed. I think Florida State has become a program of significance, and I think this 2013-2014 season is going to be real exciting. The season's about to tip off, so is the rest of this show, so stay with us. We'll talk more Florida State basketball on the other side of this break. Welcome back to First Look FSU Men's Basketball. Keith, let's pick up right where we left off in terms of a program of significance for Florida State. Uh, you know, in the past ACC, you sort of had to be in the top five to guarantee an NCAA berth. Now you bring in these three schools and to be in the top five is doing some work, but, but maybe you can be in the top eight and get an NCAA berth based on the strength of this league. I think there's a lot of advantages for adding these schools and getting up to the full complement, uh, which they will next uh, year with Louisville coming in, full complement of what I call 16 teams, the Super Conference. And if you play well and you get some lucky breaks, as Coach Hamilton likes to talk about, if you hold serve at home and you steal a few on the road, it might be just a little bit easier to get into the big dance because everybody's been elevated. Be interesting to see Florida State coming off that 18 and 16 campaign. What does this season hold? Well, let's take a look at a preview of the 2013-14 Seminole campaign. 1.7, puts up the shot, it bang, God, 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 goes with it, a stamp buzzer beater. Even with a few memorable buzzer beaters. Into the corner, stare with a triple, God, shot, stare from the corner. The Florida State men's basketball team could not overcome playing seven first-time players, missing the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2008. The North Carolina Tar Heels move into the semifinals against Maryland. That was very disappointing. We, we didn't continue the tradition that we're trying to build here. And it hurts because, you know, we were part of the team that made history. We were part of the team that had an OK season. Despite the struggles last season, being thrown into the fire has already helped the players as they prepare for this season. I mean, last year, you know, I felt that even though we were extremely young with seven first year players, uh, that uh, the experience that they were gaining from going through the fire that they were put in would uh, really help them accelerate their, their progress. We look back all the time, uh, last year, all the things we could have did, should have did. Um, this year, it's more of everyone is on the same page. One thing the Garnet and Gold lacked last season was a healthy Ian Miller, who struggled through a foot injury. But the senior is back at 100% this season and is ready to be a difference maker. It was one of the worst things I think happened in my life. 
But I think it was one of the best things too because I learned so much from sitting out and was able to get to talk to coaches every day during practice just to watch how they coach and watch what they wanted us to do. This is his senior year. I think he understands his back against the wall. His body's healthy. He's had a great offseason trying to get himself uh, into great conditioning so he can have a terrific last campaign as a Seminole and uh, he could make a huge difference in, uh, in how successful we are this year. Also ready to step up in his senior season is versatile forward Okara White, who is the team's leading returning scorer and rebounder. And despite some individual expectations, he wants the team to succeed first. I understand, you know, for me to get where I want to get, you know, the team has to be a great team and we have to go far and we have to make runs. So right now, I just kind of want to put all of my individual goals to the side. I can put my team goals first. Well, Carl's been around. He has more experience than anyone on our team. He's played more basketball. He's been in the, in the fire many, many times. He's bailed us out. He's always come through. He's been extremely consistent. Florida State also adds a new coach to the staff in 2013, with Charlton Young joining the Garnet and Gold from Georgia Southern, bringing some energy and experience to the bench. T.Y. has a tremendous amount of experience. Uh, he's from the state of Florida. He has a love for the game of basketball. He really respects Florida State and, and what we've been able to accomplish. And he's, looking at, you know, he's excited about being a part of the new ACC. The Knowles will face the daunting task of a conference schedule that includes ACC newbies, Notre Dame, Pittsburgh, and Syracuse, making the ACC the toughest conference in the country. That's why you play the game. I mean, that's why we recruit kids is you want to playing the best basketball conference. You say you want to have your chance to be an NBA player, and you know, in the NBA, you got to play every night. The thing about the ACC is you better play every night or you have no chance. I think it's the best conference now. The ACC is the best conference. Having Syracuse and you know these other good teams from the Big East uh, will help the ACC. So it's all good, you know, playing against big time teams. But to get to the next level as a program, this Seminole team needs to step up. We want to become an elite program. In order to do that, we have to have another run. Another run of six, seven, eight, nine years of success, going to the tournament, being successful. We've competed for the, the ACC title with two of the last five years. Uh, we got to be in that title game more often. It's the Florida State Seminoles who are champions of the ACC for the first time in program history. Uh, and that's how you build programs. And that's how you, you, you become an elite program. And I, I think our guys are excited about the opportunity we have to go out there and take the next step. Coming up, we'll introduce you to Florida State's four seniors and find out how they plan to take the Seminoles back to the NCAA tournament. That's straight ahead on the other side of this timeout. Stay with us. Welcome back, Tom Block, Keith Jones. Thanks for joining us. Keith, it's sort of interesting when you look at the last couple of years. Two years ago, FSU won the ACC tournament, had six seniors on the roster. A year ago, as they struggled, did not make the NCAAs. They had three seniors, but just one who started. The other two were walk-ons and Michael Snare. Now they load up for this year, and you're back to four seniors, a more veteran team as they give it another go. All of these guys have had significant playing time going all the way back to their freshman year. Uh, the thing I worry about is, is the, the nature of injuries. You know. Uh, Turpin's missed some time. Ian Miller had the foot problem last year. Keeping these guys healthy has seemed to be a little bit of a, of a challenge for Leonard Hamilton. If they can all come in, stay healthy, and play up to their level, this is a good group of seniors. Let's learn more about this quartet of Seminole seniors. The 2013-14 season is the last go around for four Seminole seniors who want to finish their careers on a high note. Even though my time here has been, it's been short, there's it's a lot more I have to take on as a senior. It's exciting, because it's another challenge, you know. And um, I'm known for, for having challenges and demolishing them. Ian Miller and Akaro White have been at Florida State since freshman. And now in their final season, the duo are understanding the importance of their role as leaders. We've been here the longest and uh, we, we've been on those ACC championship teams and the Sweet 16 team. So um, stepping in and, and learning how to, how to take responsibility for the other guys is just something we work hard on. I say this all the time to when me and Ro are talking, I don't think the team would do that good if we don't push each other, if we don't push our younger teammates, if we 
if we don't push ourselves first, and if we don't lead by example, then I don't think we'll go very far and we'll be very successful this year. I think Ian and O'Carr are definitely our vocal leaders. I mean, they've been here the longest and they know exactly what they need to do. They've been in an NCAA tournament three to four years. For guys like Robert Gilchrist and Kyle Turpin, despite transferring in, they view their roles as leaders just as importantly, especially as examples to the younger guys. I feel like I am kind of a leader, um, more of a lead by example type guy. I mean, I was here when we won the ACC, so I kind of know what to expect for like, the bigs to do, like what we, what we need to do and how to be successful. So I kind of took on that role, especially with like Jacquez coming in. He plays the same position as me. It's, it's important that I show him the right way. I can't have any of the bad habits I may have had last year. I have to show him you know, what the coaches are looking for, because once me and the car leave, it's, it's only him. So he, he's going to be in that role of showing the next person what's right and what's wrong and teammates are buying into the Seminole Quartet. i uh, definitely seen them in more of our leadership role. Before, it was a, they were starting to get there, but it was a little uncertain, but now they're definitely on top of it. These guys been here. Um, they know what it takes to get to that next level. You know, they just keep telling us, teaching us, telling us how to get there. It's not going to be easy. So, you know, they just play a big part of the role in that. A role made easier knowing that all four Seminole seniors can share the challenge. When you get pushed into that situation, you figure out right away how hard it is to, to lead a group of guys and have these guys doing the right things on and off the court. It's a very hard uh, role, but I'm glad I have a few seniors next to me who, who's helping me um, be this leader of the team. I'm Taylor Tannenbaum here with your seminal flashback. The 1972 season was one that stole the headlines. The year the Florida State men's basketball team defied all odds. The Knolls started the season off the radar. They were ignored by the national polls, had no conference affiliation, and had never won a single game in the NCAA tournament. But under coach Hugh Durham, this would all change. Ron King, Roland Garrett, Greg Samuel, Otto Petty, and Lawrence McRae. These names plus seven others made up the underestimated and overlooked 1972 Seminole squad. By regular season's end, the Knolls were on the map. With an outstanding 23-5 overall record, they were on their way to the big dance. A team that was once irrelevant became unstoppable. Los Angeles, California was home to the Final Four series. North Carolina was next. The Tar Heels were favored and stacked with future NBA superstars. But once the ball was tipped, the Seminoles made their presence known. By halftime, the Knolls were up 45 to 32 and held tight to the lead for the majority of the matchup. North Carolina chewed at the heels of Florida State narrowing the gap to a five-point difference late in the game. But when the final buzzer sounded and the scoreboard read 79-75, to 75, the hard-fought battle was settled. The national championship game would feature the Garnet and Gold. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Southern's second and feature game for the National Collegiate Athletic Association Basketball Championship FSU would meet the five-time defending national champions, UCLA, on the final stage. The Knolls shocked the nation and rocked the Bruins by pulling ahead 21-14 early in the game. It was the biggest deficit UCLA had faced all season. But it wasn't long before UCLA turned up the heat, leaving the Seminoles behind fighting for their lives. In the end, the Bruins captured the title in an 81-76 victory, the closest win UCLA had seen all season. The Seminoles' road to the title ended, their Cinderella story cut short. They may not have won a national championship, but they won over the nation. It was the perseverance and confidence of this 1972 team that changed the way Florida State basketball was viewed forever.
Coming up, we'll look back at Florida State's exciting team trip to Greece this past summer where they got to experience Greek culture and get on the basketball court with the national team from Greece. We'll look back at that fantastic trip is straight ahead when we come back. Stay with us. Seminoles had the opportunity of a lifetime this summer to travel to Greece. While the team experienced the history and traditions of the country, the main focus of the trip was basketball, and the Noles got quite the education from one of the best teams in the world, the Greece national team. Most of them are around 28 years old, and they've been like seasoned already. They've already been played in the professional leagues already, so. They're, they really know what they're doing. We were definitely a lot uh, more athletic than they were, but they tended to share the ball a lot more. So in practice, uh, I mean, we're dunking and everything, and then they're winging the ball and shooting threes and welcome threes every time. So we had to like learn to adjust quickly to their type of uh, gameplay. Them being ranked fourth in the world and going on to the tournaments that they were heading to, it was, it was great for us to give them the run that we did. Most teams take these trips to play various club teams and win by double-digit margins. However, Leonard Hamilton wanted a real test, and he got it from the fifth-ranked team in the world. Usually you go over those countries and you beat up on some teams that's not really that good. That wasn't the case. We had to play one of the best teams, probably the third best team in the world every day, and, and it forced us to get better. I think we learned a lot about how to play different styles of basketball because we played against a very talented older, more, more mature uh, Greece national team uh, that really challenged us in every, every session that we had with them. And I gotta think that it's gonna mean something as we move through the season. While the Garden and Gold learned many lessons on the court, they also found time to take in the sights off it, experiencing the history and culture of Greece. Really great, we saw a lot of sights. The ancient ruins were probably like the coolest thing there, just seeing how like their technology, how they built stuff, and compared to what we use now is, not even close to being similar, but yet their structure still stands. So it was just a really good uh, eye-opening experience for all of us. The experience that we had, to, just to be there uh, and to see all those historical places uh, and, and to enjoy the, the Greek culture and eat the Greek food. The Greek food was really good. <laughs> From food to historic sites, the Seminoles experienced it all. And for the American Knolls who found themselves unsure of customs at times, they relied on their international teammates. Most of us have never really been outside of the country, so it's just a, not a culture shock, but just you know that around the world that things get done differently. And having some international players, they like that's some of the stuff they're accustomed to. I remember being in restaurants and trying to tell them there's, there's certain things, just general etiquette in restaurants that's not acceptable in Europe, whereas it would be acceptable in America. Whether it was basketball or sightseeing, the most important product of this trip was the bond it built between teammates. Learning how to adapt to each other, learning how to adapt to not being able to use your phones. So now we have to talk to each other the whole time and it helped us. Now we know, we know things about each other that we didn't know at first. The bonding was the most important thing. My whole mindset when I was going over there was, I just want us to mesh together. Not just the game, the scrimmaging and the practicing and the, the time we had for bonding out there, it was it just brought, brought everything together. It's going to propel us into a great year, I feel like.
some final thoughts about this season, Keith. Uh, first of all, the schedule uh, is, is beefed up even more. I mentioned already Notre Dame, Syracuse come to Tallahassee. That's going to be something to see. And then FSU goes to Pitt. Next year we get Louisville. I mean, th this truly is the best basketball conference out there. If you want to be entertained on the hardwood, you need to be in the Tucker Center uh, as, as this ACC expansion comes into play. Because, you know, the traditional Dukes and North Carolinas and their rotating schedules. But as you mentioned, these new guys that you've only watched on the on the little screen, the TV right. screen, you're going to get to see them in person here in Tallahassee. Yeah, it's going to be fun to see. And then, you know, one thing that Florida State has traditionally done, whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas time, they'll play a, a, a tournament that, that will really help the RPI and, and help the team grow and sort of bond. This year they're going to go down to Puerto Rico, and it's a pretty loaded field for this uh, tournament over Thanksgiving or the week prior. You'll play three games down there. Uh, they, they roll out the red carpet, uh, so you'll be entertained while you're there, at least those of us that maybe don't have to get onto the court. But you'll be playing some pretty heady competition. VCU, uh, I believe Florida State opens with in Puerto Rico. Uh, that'll be interesting. And then, of course, you're getting that, that away time, totally focused on basketball time, playing some quality opponents, an opportunity for improvement. The season is upon us, folks. Enjoy Florida State basketball here in 2013 and 2014. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time right here.